on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. The Super Bowl is not yet cold. So who's going back next year? <laughs> is it the Baltimore Ravens or is it the San Francisco 49ers? Today on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. Ben is in alone. Scores! At just 33 years old, former Cy Young winner Brandon Webb is hanging up his cleats. Kevin Durant has averaged 46 points a game in the two meetings this season with the Dallas Mavericks. To OKC absolutely destroys Dallas. Final score in this one, 112 to 91. Well, the two top line down against each other. At 10, Morrow score! Guess what? I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. On 99.3 Talk FM, it's Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. I got to have more cowbell. Here's Brian Houston. Five o'clock hour, happy hour, more yes, cowbell. Yes. That's a great idea. Let's just do that. Just cowbell. Yeah, just cowbell for an hour. You got another commitment, though. He's waiting for I you. I guess we should go to him then. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll say this. How about more Cajun food? I'm sure Donnie would love that. Uh, uh. <laughs> right now on the uh, APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, APECGO.com. The results show when the athletes hit the field. With us right now, uh, back from New Orleans, where he spent the week hanging out. In Fat City. Did you come back fat, though? Donovan Lewis from 1310 The Ticket. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I may have packed on a few pounds coming back, but hey, it's all for the greater good. That's right, man. You got, you know, taking one for the team. I like that. That's right. That's Uh, right. Someone has to do it. How was it? It was good, man. Had a real good time. New Orleans is, you know what? I don't think anyone would be upset with the Super Bowl being in New Orleans every single year. They know how to. Uh, they know how to do it. They know how to. The, the, that town knows how to prepare Boy. and uh, show everyone a good time. So it's always good going down to uh, New Orleans for sure. All right, who's the most memorable person? The most famous person you got to talk to last week? Oh man, most famous person. Mm. Uh, you don't count. Uh, I talked to you Tuesday, right? <laughs> let me let me get you. I absolutely don't uh, count. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. You know we had uh, we had a few guys on. You know uh, the one who I anticipated the most that we had on uh, at on Radio Road during Super Bowl was uh, Too Tall Jones. Cool. And he stopped by. And yeah, it was really cool just listening to him saying that he was a. Uh, he was a two sports star in school, and it had nothing to do with football. It was baseball and basketball. Wow. And I just can't imagine too tall in the batter's box, just hunkering down, looking at you as you're on the <laughs> pitcher's mound. I would throw it in the dirt every single time no that kidding, dude is uh, just sitting there with a little wooden stick trying to kill me. But uh, <laughs> uh, I-, I thought he was real fun to talk to. We had the guys from that show on, uh, I believe it's on FX, The League. Yes. Uh, they sat down and talked to us, and that was that was pretty good because they were pretty funny. But you know what? This year didn't have a lot of just stars walking around as in previous years. Like on Media Day last year, I saw a lot of people uh, walking around that you had an opportunity to either talk to or take a picture with. But this year, um, a lot of people doing bits, but a lot of non-famous people down there doing bits. So uh, it was still good times, though. You know, you saw a lot of people walking around the media center being interviewed, uh, Tracy Morgan and okay. Deshaun Jackson. And, <laughs> you know, you get to scream uh, scream out things to some people walking by. Of course, well, Beyonce did her little press conference. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe that's who I need to say it was the most famous. Uh, you know what? I actually took a picture with Beyonce. Did you? She was, she was on TV, and I was standing uh. by the TV. <laughs> that's as close as I'll ever get. Uh, I was I was about to say she's like a vampire. It didn't show up in the in the picture, right? right? If the, let me tell you something, if I would have taken a picture with Beyonce, you would know as soon as the <laughs> snap was taken. You would hear me scream from New Orleans like a little girl. So uh, don't worry about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and how many great places did you eat at? Oh man, uh, uh, we. We went to uh, uh, Acme Oyster Bar. Oh, I believe yeah. that's a real famous place in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. That was really good. We actually went down uh, to the Treme and uh, went to the Candlelight Lounge to uh, nice. hear a little New Orleans jazz band play. And, and that was real. That was really, really cool uh, watching the show on HBO Sweet. and then going down and checking it out. So, yeah, yeah, we had a real good time, man. I, I, was, I was telling my wife that. You know, we have to go down and uh, visit now that uh, everything, all the craziness is over with. I don't know how good of a time we would have had down there while all the craziness was going on. But, you right. know, kind of let some of those people go on their merry way, and then I can go and swoop in and pick up the pieces. So <laughs> I told her that we had to go and take a visit down there real soon. It, it, was, it was a really good time down there. Good deal. I'm glad yeah. you had a good time. Now, how would you like the football? Oh, football was great. That was uh 
just watching the game, man, and even when Baltimore jumped out, uh, sat around and uh, watched it with a few friends and, and said, hey, this is going to be a game no matter what happens. Now, I didn't think that the lights were going to go out and, you know, we had a half-hour delay, but I knew, I knew San Francisco, this is their M.O., being a second-half team, and this, that's just how the NFL is at times. When someone jumps out to a big league, it happens in every sport, probably except baseball. You, you see a basketball game and someone jumps out to a nice 25-point lead, the other team's always going to make a run because that team gets disinterested at times, you know? Sure. Just human nature. That's hap- that happens. So I knew it was going to get a little closer. I didn't think it was going to get that close, and it was a really, really good football game. Did you? Uh, what did you think of the officiating? You know, I am... Um, I will always like to err on the side of not making enough calls. Okay. If, if you have one way or the other, a, a crew that's throwing too many flags or throwing not enough, I'm always on the side of throwing not enough. You know, you let them go out there and play. And, you know, it's easier for the winning team to say, hey, the referees let us play. They just have to accept it. That's really easy to say because you won the ball game. <laughs> and, you know, I can, I can totally understand uh, Harbaugh being uh, frustrated over the non-call uh, down there in the fourth quarter. But, Man, I don't care if it's the Super Bowl or it's week two. Things like that happen. That's right. You know, the referees swallow their whistles. And, and I, I don't believe, though, I, I, I'm sorry, I do believe a foul is a foul or a penalty is a penalty, whether it's two minutes left or it's two minutes into the game. I, I never liked the notion where they say, well, you know, you just can't make that call towards the end of the game. you got to let the players decide. That's, I think that's crap. Yeah. If it's a, if it's a foul or a penalty with, uh, in the first quarter, it's a foul or a penalty in the fourth. But, hey, they just – felt like they didn't need to make that call at that time that happens all the time it's just kind of it's just kind of a bad break that maybe one of those times cost you a super bowl you know that those things happen those things happen um, all the time what did you think of joe flacco's uh career year performance there <laughs> man it is it is a trip because i'm one of those guys yes i play fantasy football and i play it a lot and he was the quarterback on my team, and I was so ready to cut him and tired of him <laughs> because he threw 22 touchdowns in the regular season. In 16 games, Flacco threw 22 touchdowns, and he had 11 in four games in the playoffs. Unbelievable. So he absolutely stepped up in the playoffs. Now, does that mean he's going to – is he a $20 million a year quarterback? And I don't think so. I don't think so if, if Manning and Brady and their, those guys are $20 million a year quarterbacks. Boy, I, don't, I wouldn't call Flacco that. Now, does he, does he deserve to get paid? Of course. He has his ring, and that's what counts, right? Yeah. Get your ring, you win the big game, you got to go out there and get some money. So he, he deserves a really, really nice contract. I just don't know if I'm going to call him elite. You know, he had a great, great playoff run, and I'm not taking any of that away from him. But you know what? Do it again. Hey. Do it again <laughs> before I give you $20 million a year, you know? Well, he's going to have to be the star now with Lewis gone. That defense is getting old. I mean, if they're going to win it again, it's going to be because Flacco took him there. Oh, without a doubt. No doubt about it. He's going to have to step up. You know what? This year, I do believe the offense, and in the, probably the last couple of years with Baltimore, the offense has been doing a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier, it was straight, straight defense carrying Baltimore. Heck, Trent Dilfer has a yes. Super Bowl ring. So you know that the defense carried that team. But you can tell, you can absolutely tell that throughout the years that this the, uh, defense is getting a little older, a little slower, and this offense has been having to pick up the pieces. And, hey, you know, you have Torrey Smith out there with the deep threat, and you have Ray Rice running the ball, and you have Anquan Bowden with those strong hands. Just, just. But the one thing about Baltimore, Brian, I don't know if you know, I know you noticed it, but I just wanted to mention it. Yeah that they have the biggest boys in the whole wide world, their coaching staff. Because I thought that fourth down play, to bring the house and have everyone in your backfield going <laughs> man-to-man, takes some of the biggest guts in the whole world. Man. Onions, baby, onions. That is, that is the definition of onions. To absolutely leave everyone in your secondary on an island by themselves and just absolutely go out to quarterback. You, you know, you look at... You know, you can only compare it to this team that we follow all the time, and you absolutely know that they will have the not even close to the onion. No, to no. do anything like that. No, they, they, they barely would, they rush, rush the quarterback. They, they would rush two and drop nine, <laughs> and still give up the play. You know, uh, just and that third and inches where not only did they not run it. Because I do believe they would have gone for it on fourth down. Because I would have also. I think I think they had two downs to get two inches. Yeah. Not only to go for it and throw it, 
but to throw it to a receiver who is absolutely covered. I mean, there was no opening at all. But Flacco threw it up, and he trusted Bolden to go up there and get it. Now, those are those are onions, man. Hey, that those are the plays that win championships, and that's what did, that's what did it for Baltimore. Well, and players that could make those plays. Right, right. You, you know. can think back to this component. You remember uh, when you knew that the Cowboys wanted to trade for a receiver. You knew it. Yes. And Bolden was yes. probably top of the list, Dadgummit. and 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 instead of Bolden, it was Roy Williams. Now, oh. don't you think, don't uh, you think don't that things might this. be a little different around here? Man, if you had Anquan Bolden catching the pill as your second receiver. That dude is a man. I he love makes man plays. I love Anquan Bolden, and and then I heard on Sunday morning that uh, somebody had reported that the Ravens were actually thinking of releasing him to free up cap space. Oh wow! And, and I'm wow. going, dude. That's- Dallas, yeah. get on him now. No doubt. I think Baltimore would be crazy. That's nuts, like huh? That. Yeah. You know, he's not going to go for 1,400 yards and score 14 touchdowns, but when you need that play and you need that catch, you need it tough, that's the dude that you need. I'd take him on my team any, any day of the week. What I like about him, too, Donnie, is that, I mean, he's just got this surly look on his face. He looks like he would get in his own teammate's face, and that's the kind of player Dallas doesn't have right now. They don't have a leader, and that guy looks like a leader. Nasty. Yes. Nasty. I say, you know, you see a, you see a little nasty in Dez, but it's almost like it's not controlled nasty. Th- that's crazy. Controlled that's not nasty. Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has the absolute controlled chaos that, you know what, he's upset and he's he's teed off and he's teed off at you and there's nothing you can do to stop him. You're right. That's the attitude they do need around here. Man, uh, now, and that gets me to the depressing part of this conversation. Is, is, <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, you know, you know where this is going. Yeah. I mean, you sit there and you watch this team that won a Super Bowl, and you see how this thing is constructed, and then you compare it to what we got to deal with in Dallas with Jerry, uh, and and you know, of course, Jerry's got himself convinced now that you know because they lost by just a handful of points to Baltimore back in October, mm-hmm. they're that close, right? And, and so. I mean, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can. You, it, it happened last year with the Giants. You know what? We were one win away from making the playoffs. That could have been us. Oh yeah. And now this year, it's like you know what? Uh, we were a field goal away from beating the Super Bowl champions. So obviously, we have something good going on. So maybe I do need to move up in this draft and just get that one <sighs> player because we're not missing much. We lost to Baltimore by two points. That's it. Yeah, we're so, right on the yeah, edge, man. Yeah, the, the, and and that's the. That's the frustration you can get because you can, I can almost, I will put money down that that's exactly what he said in the last couple of days. That look, we were that close from beating the Super Bowl champion, so maybe we're not that far away. And yes, that is frustrating. And uh, uh, this situation here is 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 getting laughable right now. If they don't do something to change the culture around here, and I know that was a big big. Uh, catchphrase when Garrett first got the job because everyone thought that it was a culture change around Valley Ranch and I just I just kind of laughed out right out the door and now you can see that that's just not the case and you're not going to get a culture change if the man sitting on the throne calling the shots and 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 making all the rules if he's not going anywhere if he's not going to adjust then nothing's going to adjust around there and was life uncomfortable at Valley Ranch this past uh, off season, I don't think so. Not for any I don't think players it's not at all. Yeah, none, none, none whatsoever. So what's the point? Okay, you change your defensive coordinator. Big deal. What is that going to do? It's not going to do a thing. So uh, they've they've got a lot of work to do now. Uh, free agent wise, if they have, if they're going to have any money to do anything. They're going to have to draft well, and we're going to have to count on the Cowboys to draft oh, well man. if they're going to make a change around here. And I'm I'm not putting my money on that right now because they've proven that they haven't. Uh, been able to uh, get steals and and get locks in the draft the last few years. And and you saw the way these two head coaches handle their business, and there's no doubt about who's in charge on that sideline and in that organization. And and then what do you make of Jerry out at the Senior Bowl last week after basically hiring all of Jason Garrett's coaches for him, saying that it was Jason putting the staff together and that Jason's doing all this stuff? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. What was that about? I don't know. It's just this lip service, and it's the lip service service we've been fed around here for a long time. Yeah, to go back on your point about the coaches, you can absolutely tell who wears the big draws on those sidelines. (laughs) And it's not even close. It's those hardball boys. And and you just sit back and you just wish – 
that Garrett, you just don't see that command and control of the sidelines like those other two guys Well, is it, is it possible for him to have that command if – Jerry's doing the stuff he's doing to undermine him at the same time? Or? I know. I don't know if it's possible, but it has to be done. You're not going to get to a Super Bowl with a coach if you're questioning if they have control of their sidelines. In it. They just That's just not done. Not at all. Name the last coach that made it to the Super Bowl that you thought, ah, I don't know if he has complete control of what's going on. I'm not quite sure. No. No. no it doesn't no. happen. doesn't person, happen. Yeah, that person is not out there at all. So... Yeah, they they they've got they've got a lot of work to do, and and if Garrett, uh, if he hands over the play calling, like it seems like that's what's going to happen, if he gets that command and control, you know what? Maybe things can happen around here, but until then, it's just going to be the same old thing. All right. So let's say they give the play calling duties to Callahan, which it sure looks like that's where they're headed with this right, right. now with their hires today, and you know. Uh, Wes Phillips now the tight ends coach and a new offensive line coach or assistant offensive line coach Frank Pollock and uh, so do you see Jason Garrett being the kind of guy that would rip into a guy for missing a block or dogging it on defense or you know doing something stupid on you know on the field or, or getting a, a, a idiotic penalty do you see Jason Garrett being that guy if he doesn't have to worry about calling plays I don't think so but, uh, you know, because I, I guess you have to look at it another way is that you can't be fake, I guess, on the sideline. You can't just all of a sudden rip into someone and start cursing someone out and grabbing them by the helmet and all that if that's not you. Okay. If you're just trying to put on an act, then they're going to see right through that. They're grown men. They're going right. to see right through that. But I think you can have command and control of the sidelines without just blowing a gasket. Uh, I think a lot of people confuse hothead coaches as just absolutely being in control. And I don't think that's the case. I think you can have an absolute command of the sideline without doing all that crazy stuff. Now, are you going to have to do it every now and then? Of course. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if, you, know, you pull someone over and you're talking to them about what happened and what did they see and what they saw wrong and how to correct it, you don't absolutely have to just, you know, go over there and, you know, spit and be a cow or spitting in the face to <laughs> get your point across. You know, you just have to go over there and sometimes there are teaching moments, sometimes there are yelling moments. And, and that's, you know, that's a, that's a learned skill, man. You just can't all of a sudden turn that on and off and think you know what to do in every situation. That, it, that's why, you know what, that's why there are only 32 of these things out there, man. It takes a special person to be a really, really good coach and special traits, and if you don't have it, then you don't have it. I don't think a lot of that stuff is taught. You have to have it inside of you to be a really, really good coach. Now, what we've seen from Garrett, boy, it just doesn't look like he has it, but who knows? Maybe if that stuff is taken off of his plate, uh, he will – be better on the sidelines he's gonna have to because if he's not next year he's done that's it it's over that experiment is done so he's gonna have to do it for his own job sake all right now let me ask you this now the the football season's over okay why would you bring that up uh, what are we gonna watch now for the, i mean because the, the mavericks are awful they're not gonna make the playoffs yeah they're pretty bad the, the stars don't do anything for me okay I mean, what the college basketball is eh you know, I mean, <laughs> what, what what are we, you know, MMA, what? Oh, yeah, that's that's another, that might be another eh for a lot of people also. <laughs> it would be so, for me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what, we're going to watch the NFL Network until it comes back to real games. <laughs> so they, maybe they'll run reruns and just, just listening to football. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, so I even like... though the Mavericks are struggling, uh, uh, the NBA is something that I do enjoy watching, so uh, I can pass my time a little bit with that. Okay, and you know the range is coming back, and we'll we'll, we'll see what they have to offer. So there there'll be things. It's, everything always does revolve around football, and although everyone's happy that the Super Bowl happens, and it's a great game, and it's a fantastic event, that signals the end of football, and that always makes me a tad bit sad. I'm I'm pretty depressed right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sad already. Only only two days. Uh, afterwards and I, and I already need a little football i'm with you buddy i yeah. am with you yeah. hey man i'm glad you enjoyed the time in new orleans thanks very much for coming on with us last week while you were there oh, uh, oh it was fun i My had pleasure. a blast with you as always yeah. and, and thanks for coming on with us every week we really appreciate it donovan hey my pleasure we we'll talk to you next week good man. talking to you buddy all right donovan lewis 1310 the ticket on brian houston sports radio live on 99.3 talk fm